Good morning. Before we begin, I ask you to note the emergency exits at the front and back of the auditorium and share a gentle reminder to silence your phones if you haven't already. I would like to welcome all of you to the 202nd graduation ceremony at Delaware Academy, and most importantly, to the commencement of the Delaware Academy graduating class of 2022. If you would please stand for the singing of the national anthem, sorry, for Shana Mondor. Beautiful. You may be seated. <laughs> Welcome to the seniors, family members, our superintendent, Mrs. Zimmerman, Board of Education, school leadership team, our guest speaker, Mr. Mackey, to the faculty able to join us today, and to the, all those who are watching us via our live stream. I would like to take a moment to thank the maintenance, kitchen, and support staff who have worked many hours behind the scenes to make this ceremony possible. Please give them a round of applause. If you'll excuse me for a moment, I need to get my speech. thought it was in my backpack. <laughs> Surely that pack, backpack's not going to fit in my locker. <laughs> However, I do hope it's in here. Got it. Thank goodness that whole thing's resolved, right? Graduates of 2022, we have had a very limited time to get to know each other. And yet, you have taught me quite a lot about who you are as a class, as individuals, and what it means to be a Bulldog. You are a tenacious group, one that challenges the status quo, but does so through collaboration with your peers and administration. This can at times be humorous in approach, but nonetheless serious in message. And at times worrisome, after all, as a mother, I had serious concerns when one of your classmates' laundry baskets was in my office for over two weeks. I could only imagine the floor of the owner's room, what it looked like, and was basically begging the student to come get it off from the office. Please, I promise you, we're working on the backpack policy. You need to take this home. You are a resilient group, having made it not only through the belly of education during the time of COVID, but also through a freshman orientation class 
and a senior seminar class. Your high school education will undoubtedly be an outlier, different from those before you and those after you. However, I can't help but observe, largely from an outside perspective, of how you have adapted through all this. Perhaps this is why you don't settle for a single no, or because this is how it needs to be, without seeking to gain a deeper understanding of the reason. Despite our short time together, there are moments from the class that will forever stay in my heart. Thank you for being an agent of change and voice for the student body. Thank you for allowing me to share in the celebration of your acceptance to college, especially to those that didn't initially think it was available to them. Thank you for the invitation to join you on the dance floor at prom. And thank you for the opportunity to get to know you and some of your parents. <laughs> Through all these moments, class of 2022, you have taught me that being a bulldog is about action, acceptance, and inclusivity. These are all characteristics that will serve you well in life beyond these walls. I urge you to continue to question and speak up when things don't make sense. But I also must share a reminder to be flexible in your own beliefs and opinions. After all, it was stated best when minds are like parachutes, they only function when they are open. Today is a celebration of you and your accomplishments leading you to this moment. Try to hold on to as many memories from the day as you can. Congratulations and keep moving forward. I would now like to invite our guest speaker, Mr. Robert Mackey, to the podium. Mr. Mackey was an educator for 34 years. He recently really retired from Unadilla Valley as a superintendent and earlier this year served as interim middle high school principal here at Delaware Academy. Earlier this month, Mr. Mackey was honored as a SUNY Oneonta Alumni of Distinction, and we are honored to have him here speaking with us today. Well, thank you. Good morning, respected teachers, administrators, school board members, parents, family, friends of the class of 2022, and most importantly, the class of 2022. I'm going to try to speak to them, so if my back is to you, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. It's truly an honor to be back in the house the Bulldogs built. Today is a very special day for these dogs. There is no doubt the emotions for you are probably pretty interesting right now. I saw some of you nervous in the cafeteria, some of you excited in the cafeteria. It's a little different than kindergarten graduation and eighth grade graduation, I think. A little more permanent, but it doesn't have to be permanent. That's the cool part of life. We'll get there. I'm sure this year you've heard many, many times, you have to know this and be able to do this in the real world, right? Raise your hand if you've heard it. Did you get it from your parents? I did when I was your age. I got it from teachers. I got it from the assistant principal every time I got in school suspension. Um, yeah, I was one of them. So, I was going to bring my speech in in my backpack, but I realized I didn't want to get suspended, so I left my backpack in the car. I just thought I'd pick up on that because I loved the shopping cart that day I came by. Um, here's, the, here's something that I want you to really think about. Your world may seem different to us as adults, but that doesn't make it not real. Your responsibility, different today. Different the last 18 or so years. Tomorrow, a lot different. September, even more different. But that's kind of the cool part about the real world. It's always real, and it always changes. Sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. 
So, as we move forward, I'm sure you've learned some valuable lessons these last 18 years. Some have been academic, probably some of them social, interacting with each other, whether it's in person or in that 24-7 world we live in. Since you aren't really, oh wow, yeah, you aren't really the connected generation. You are the, um, what did I call it? The notification generation, right? Your watch vibrates if you have a Fitbit or some watch that attaches to your smartphone. Your smartphone can ding. Heck, you guys make your smartphone flash, go off when you have a notification, just so you don't miss one in the middle of the night. So I consider myself kind of a social media person, but I know I'm an immigrant to it. And so I'll call myself the notification generation immigrant because I do kind of every now and then get stuck looking too. We're going to talk about that because a friend of mine taught at SUNY Oneonta for many years. And she started something called the mentor community with pre-service teachers. And it was one of my favorite groups to ever go work with. And I worked with them for about 10, 15 years. They were an amazing group of young ladies and gentlemen, great leaders. And they had a motto. Their motto was make every encounter count. Make every encounter count. So ironically, I look at myself as a person who tries to do that. I tried to live that motto just like they did. It was, it was, there are days it's really hard. There are days when email as a superintendent was way beyond anybody's wildest imagination of how many emails you can get in one day. I, I don't even count them. I did have a school board count them once and say, a school board president say, well, he did send us over 150 thousand emails this year. It wasn't really that many, but she counted them um, because I used to, they used to say I didn't communicate well. You might not realize this, but when I was your age, I was quiet, shy, and introverted. No jaws dropped. I really have a, I've changed a lot in, uh, in the last 10 years since I graduated high school. Um, and, it, and I like to think that I've changed because I've, I've started to feel like I'm really living in the moment, in the present. And making every encounter count is that very thing, right? It is taking advantage of the now. We are here. This is graduation. You might be nervous. You might be excited. You might be, I don't know what I am. But you're here. You've hit a milestone, number one, massive one. You've had many before. This is a big one. It is just one ending, right? One ending. But in this time you've been here, have you not made connections with your peers? Right? Do you have memories you're never going to forget? Were they in school? I have some from the cafeteria. Heck, for two years, I spent my, my lunch period eating by myself for half a year in my office because no one could eat together. Heck, no one was in school. The next year, we were eating in classrooms, but you couldn't talk because, you know, obviously, breathing was something that was hard with COVID. So um, it was weird. And when I came here, I ate in the cafeteria with kids again. We circled desks, and every now and then I stole people's seats. And I had fun. I lived in the moment. I lived in the now. And I have such great memories. You need to do that. You need to do that through the good times when it's easy to do that. You need to do that in the bad times when it's hardest to do that. When you are down and out and feeling despair, there is an opportunity like never before to learn and grow. 
you learn and grow in those moments more than you do in the good times. You learn about your character. Your character grows. The person you will become. You've spent the last 18 or so years being the person you are because of who you're surrounded by. Guess what changes by September for so many of you? You'll be surrounded by all new people. Now, some may say, that's a scary thing. I'm going to be in a different place. It's not home. But in one of my favorite movies, who I get accused of being a football player in, I think a guy, oh no, I'm in the wrong movie. It's Joe Dirt. It's not the water boy. Home is where you make it. Today, home is here. September, home may be on a ship in the ocean, in the Navy. It may be at sports field specialties, working. It may be at college. It may be at trade school. It may be in another state. Home is where you make it. And if you make every encounter count, that becomes a new part of your home. Incredible memories in your life. Growth opportunities. There is always hope where there is despair. There is always opportunity where there is tragedy. It is what you choose and how you choose to face it. As a group, you have faced a three, feels like a three-year ordeal that very few graduates will, from high school will have ever faced as seniors in a row right before they left. It's been different for you. It's been different for all of us. The good news is, I watched you treat others the way they want to be treated, not just how you want to be treated. Again, making, so lesson two, first lesson of making every encounter count is be present in the now. The second one, Make everybody's day you encounter. So if you encounter someone that you don't know, do you walk by them or do you say hello? Are you that person who I see in the hall like this? Or are you that person whose eyes are up and you're greeting people? Which one was I? A or B? I think I was B most of the time. And I think I picked on you when you were A. Some of you may know who you are. If my eyes are up, I see people. When I see people, I can tell if they're having a good day or a bad day. My job as a human being, much less an interim principal, is to make their day. I say hello to everybody. I go to New York City. I'm like that weird guy on the street, at least to the people who live there, right? I'm the guy who says, hey, how you doing? I try to start conversations with people who eyes, whose eyes are always down, just because. Life is about connections. Third lesson to making every day count. Connect. Stay connected and connect, but make them real. Don't connect just because you think you should. Make connections that are deep and meaningful in your life. When you've done this and you fill someone else's bucket, your bucket will be full. In closing, I have asked a few people to help me out. So before I actually close, I want a couple of people to help me. I, had to, I, I couldn't cold call because Mrs. Zimmerman said no. <laughs> so I left, a, I left a good friend home. I have a friend named Pete, and I forgot him. I left him in a box in the garage. Pete's just a small guy. Um, he's actually a stuffed fish, my friend Pete. And I, I do a lot of fish philosophy training, which sounds fishy. Um, but it's, it's really cool stuff, and it's simple. It's be there 
It is make their day. It is choose your attitude. And you don't always have to choose to be positive. One of the most famous attitudes that's picked at my conference days when I do the training is pissed off, sorry. Um, but, and then lastly, play. Life should be joyful. So I'm hoping that we have a little joy here with some graduate participation. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna ask for volunteers. I've planted a few of them. I'm gonna toss, we'll call him Slothy, because he's not Pete. Um, he's not as colorful as Pete, but you know he'll do the trick. He won't hurt if you have bad hands like the Dallas Cowboy receivers. I can say that they're my team, right? I didn't say it about the Giants. All right, so here we go. When I ask for a volunteer, raise your hand, and here's what you're going to do. We're going to practice make their day. Because the most important part of life isn't you or me, it's, the other, it's those around us. So when you raise your hand, I'll throw you slothy. You catch slothy, or if you drop it, the person next to you, please pick it up and hand it to them. Just be nice. Awesome. Make their day. Don't pick on them about their catch um, or lack thereof. And you're going to say something to make the day of a teacher, a staff member, a parent, a family member, a classmate. It's got to be something that fills their heart with joy. Good? Everybody ready? All right. Do I have any volunteers? <laughs> loud, loud teacher voice. Where are they? Oh, sorry. That was almost too close to call. No. Okay, I want to recognize these three lovely ladies that see the triplets, and they just turned 18 yesterday. all day. If you, if you ever want to do it again, I'll do a workshop for you. But I'll bring Pete. All right, so let me, let me share how you and this school made my day. Your, you, your peers, the faculty and staff, the administration, the school board members, and the community here at Delhi will forever hold a spot in what I call my smile file. You were gonna think, you thought I was gonna say heart, you'll be there too. But my smile file is something really important to me. The best part about a smile file is when you're having that day that's just bringing you down, you reach in that desk drawer or wherever you keep it and you pull it out and you open it up and you take a look at those memories that will live with you forever and they fill your heart 
and your life with joy. And they do that because in those moments, you were present. You made someone's day, and in return, in a day of despair, they now have given you hope and made your day. Please know how important you and this community were in my life, and I thank you very much. Congratulations, make every encounter count, and have fun living a life in the real world. In the program, you will note the degrees and honors for the class of 2022. At this time, when I call your names, graduates, Please stand and remain standing until all names have been called in each category. Audience, if you could please hold your applause until each category. Thank you. The New York State Board of Regents has established multiple graduation pathways for achieving high school diploma in New York State. It's okay. Each pathway recognizes individual student achievement and mastery on various levels of high school and college level coursework, including industry standard certifications in areas. The following list recognizes the highest levels of diplomas and credentials offered in New York State and at Delaware Academy. The New York State Regents Diploma with advanced designation with honors with mastery in math and science. Abby Leahy, Sylvia Little, Lucia Marsiglio, Camille Muller, Amanda Nealis, Anna Tessier, Lonnie Weiss, Tommy Warden. <laughs> New York State Regents Diploma with advanced designation with honors with mastery in math. Cece Finn, Annalise Taylor. <laughs> New York State Regents Diploma with advanced designation with honors in mastery, sorry, with honors with mastery in science. Sienna Dorr, Garrett Fitch, Lauren Packard, Elise Rapunkus. New York State Regents Diploma with Advanced Designation with Mastery in Math and Science. Abigail Kivit, Julian Olson, Marco Shaw. <laughs> New York State Regents Diploma with Advanced Designation with Mastery in Science. Georgiana Versfor. New York State Regents Diploma with Advanced Designation. Reed Knapp, Maya Kolig, Issa Shaw, Shana Mondor, Joelle Smith, Cadence Waken. <laughs> New York State Regents Diploma with Honors. Donovan Allen, Isabel Ewing, Ashley Komosinski, Brianna Lau, Carter Small. <laughs> New York State Diploma with College Technical Education Program Certificates. Garrett Decker, Julian Olson, Jacob Sulis, Carter Small. New York State Regents Diploma with Career and Technical Education Endorsement. Isabel Ewing, Dakota Hoyt, Gregory Ingham, Ingram, Daniel Maney, Cody Sage, Caden Wagner.
New York State Regents Diploma, Brandon Armstrong, Skylar Riggs, Jared Cheshire, Garrett Decker, Michaela Hilo, Logan Hitchcock, Dakota Hoyt, Michaela Hunter, Gregory Ingram, Skylar Knox, Libby Lamport, Kendra Lau, Shelby Lau, Danny Maney, Rowan McCarthy, Kenny Rasmussen, David Reese, Cody Sage, Jacob Sulas, Trevor Swart, Jeremy Van de Bogart, and Caden Wagner. <laughs> New York State Skills and Achievement Commencement Credential, Trevor Bowie. National Honor Society. Sienna Dorr, Cece Finn, Garrett Fitch, Libby Lamport, Abby Leahy, Sylvia Little, Lucia Marsiglio, Camille Muller, Amanda Nealis, Julian Olson, Lauren Packard, Issa Shaw, Carter Small, Joelle Smith, Caden Swacken, Tommy Warden. <laughs> Shana Mondor. Thank you. The National Technical Honor Society, Isabel Ewing. <laughs> the next list is the class of 2022 graduates with a cumulative GPA of 90 or above. Donovan Allen, Sienna Dorr, Cece Finn, Garrett Fitch, Abigail Kivet, Maya Coley, Elizabeth Lamport, Ashley Komosinski, Abby Leahy, Sylvia Little, Brianna Lau, Lucia Marsiglio, Shana Mondor, Camille Muller, Amanda Nealis, Julian Olson, Lauren Packard, Elise Rapunkis, David Reese, Marco Shaw, Issa Shaw, Carter Small, Joelle Smith, Annalise Taylor, Anna Tessier, Cadence Waken, Lonnie Weiss, and Tommy Warden. <laughs> and to recognize the New York State FCCLA State Vice President, Ashley Komosinski. I would now like to invite our salutatorian, Thomas Warden, to the podium. Hello, hello. Good morning, friends. What a privilege it is to see this outpouring of pride and support for this graduating class, and to see you all here face to face. Graduations did not look like this these past years, and I have copies of the old speeches to prove it. So, it's so great to have you here to celebrate with us. I'm gonna try and keep this speech to the point as best as I can, so here we go. First, mom and dad, I have no one but myself to thank for the dark bags under my eyes from the long nights of cramming to meet the deadlines I ignored for weeks, but I have both of you to thank for the coffee, for tolerating my nocturnal vigils, for stealing my nerves when I was too anxious to even start writing those essays and for supporting me unconditionally, especially on those following days when I was too burned out to even eat dinner. You two have been my stalwart protectors. I love you and thank you both more than words can say. Second, to all my former teachers, I want you all to know that I took your assignments very seriously and never procrastinated to complete them in a timely and organized manner. <laughs> Honestly, I owe most of you an apology. I have a bad habit of finishing a class and then excommuni excommunicating myself from you. You are the people who have dedicated their lives and careers to being helpful enough, inspirational enough, and long-suffering enough 
to pass their wisdom and expertise on to kids like me. Thank you for your long nights and dedication. No other profession deals with the expectations you deal with, and yet you toil and you give, and in the end, we get to where we are today because of each of you. That's especially clear after seeing how you adapted to online teaching in the thick of the pandemic, navigated constantly changing guidelines, and managed it with the grace and the humanity to put smiles on students' faces through it all. Thank you, teachers. A round of applause, please. Next, I'm sorry, but I have to take this opportunity to lecture all of you. And just when we all thought we were done with lectures for a while. But I'm not going to get a chance like this one again, so bear with me. What I want to talk about is integrity. Integrity has two definitions, and the first refers to the qualities of honesty and moral uprightness that we might attribute to a person. The second definition refers to the condition of being whole or intact, unified and consistent and robust. We might use this definition to talk about a simple object or something more complex like a structure or organization. Integrity is interesting to me because of the interplay between its two meanings and because it doesn't take the lessons of history to notice that many things, the integrity of which we take for granted, are actually quite fragile. If you've been awake at all recently, then you'll remember that a year and a half ago, a mob overran the Capitol building in Washington, DC. They erected a gallows on the front steps of the national legislature. Today, ongoing hearings have widened to investigate claims that Trump administrative staff and Trump supporters could have installed false electors within the Electoral College undermining the integrity of free democratic elections. You may also recall that in February of this year, Russia began a ground invasion of Ukraine, challenging the Ukrainian government's fledgling independence, which was hard won in the 2014 Revolution of Dignity. Voice of America reports that by the start of June, around 7.1 million Ukrainian citizens had been displaced within the country, while around 6.8 million had fled the country entirely and nearly a quarter of a million now find themselves without a home to return to. 1,900 schools and universities have been damaged, and there have been nearly 300 attacks on hospitals. And mind you, the viral pandemic that we have come to live with has not simply waited on standby throughout all of this. The death toll estimates for this war range wildly based on the source, but they are firmly in the tens of thousands at least. In our own backyard, school shootings, like the tragedy that took place last month in Uvalde, Texas, remind us that our own public safety is no less assailable. And these are just a handful of the high-profile ruptures in the integrity of our modern world. In this life, we know there are obstacles and influences opposed to integrity. We know this. From the Latin root, rupt, we derive words like rupture, bankrupt, disrupt, and especially corrupt which all signify a bursting or breaking down. In other words, a loss of integrity. Now, whatever your personal goals and aspirations in life, something everybody wants is integrity. We need integrity to have trust and to form relationships of significance with the people, the things, and the institutions we come into contact with from day to day. We're constantly searching for integrity without the need for conscious thought. Rooting out the charlatans from the people and organizations with integrity is just a matter of self-preservation. But allow me now to dial back the gloominess, because if we fixate only on the ruptures, then we lose sight of that special quality, which is the crux of this lesson. Integrity, integrity, integrity. Integrity is the only antidote to rupture. The integrity of our social system is dependent on constant maintenance, and that maintenance is dependent on each member citizen. If we want to reap the benefits of robust, honest institutions, then we must each personally harness our own acute discernment for integrity and do so in a conscious way, decrying corruption and graft and upholding those who truly possess integrity. By being mindful of the overarching integrity and unity of our collective, we may individually begin to act with integrity. We'll more easily and readily take up the benevolent works that bring people together in charity will more easily and readily shun the choices and the paltry misdeeds which only disrupt relations of significance between ourselves and others, or which endanger others. And we will more easily and readily own up to our mistakes, knowing that by doing so we don't degrade ourselves, but we transcend ourselves in favor of growth and forward momentum. And we'll see ourselves as we really are, 
as collaborators in a far bigger and grander undertaking than any one person can envision. When we think about integrity, what it really yields us is perspective on the things that matter. And that understanding will serve us well in the lives before all of us. Thank you. Next, I would like to call the class of 2022 president, Camille Muller, to this podium. Good morning. Ooh. As few of you may know, I have had the privilege of being either president or vice president of this class before me for the past four years. It has been an honor to represent this class, but the truth is, that I had no clue what I wanted to say to you all today. You would think I would have some idea since I technically represented this class for four years, but no. Someone advised me to tell a story that encapsulates our class. The funny thing is that there is no story I'm allowed to share up here. It is commonly believed that since we live in Delaware County, there is no diversity. However, I'd like to go so far as to say that we are one of the most diverse classes to ever go through Delaware Academy. Every class has its cliques and groups. There are the brains, the athletes, the artists, the musicians, the farmers, and even those who go to CTEP. We use these words to summarize our classmates. This enables us to easily fog over their true identity. As humans, uh, as humans, we assume we know someone because of what group we say they are a part of. We also tend to alienate those who we do not know out of fear. This is a common theme we see in our society today. Well, I am here to clarify that we are truly no different. We all drive trucks, family vans, sports cars, and even tractors to the same school. We range from small to big wheels, but as Edward Kennedy once said, what divides us pales in comparison to what unites us. And I believe this to be true. We haven't been able to come together much as a class this year, and, but here we are today. From what I can recall, this is the first time we have all been together for an event this year. Some might ask why we are so diverse. My answer might have something to do with the fact that two of our high school years consisted of online learning. We've had two different superintendents and five different principals. These sort of changes make unification and consistency hard for any school or organization. We haven't had a lot of consistency in our world and clearly we've had to face the same in our school. I believe that our class is a microcosm of the world we live in today, but this is not a bad thing. According to Catherine Pulsifer, an author of Inspirational Words, we are all different, which is great, because we are all unique. Without diversity, life would be very boring. Yeah, we are not boring. We will have doctors, teachers, construction workers, therapists, barbers even, some of us will be college bound, some will travel the world to discover themselves first, and some will go directly into their careers. These differences will make the class of 2022 very distinct. No matter what, if I could say anything to my classmates as I stand before them today, I would like to tell them to embrace the diversity in each other. Don't assume you know someone by the sport they play or what bus they ride to their classes. We will remember these differences we've seen here during our high school years, and we will build on our abilities to accept each other when we are in the real world. We have learned how to survive and adapt here in Delhi. We are ready to take on the challenges we are sure to face. As your class president, my final order of duty is to encourage you to face the world, ask you to accept others without judgment, and to wish you the best of luck in the big, diverse world we are about to enter. Thank you. I would like to invite Ms. Mrs. Mabel and Mr. Schultz to the podium for an the announcing of scholarships and awards. Good morning. Um, I just want to say that it is an honor to be up here with the graduates. I've been in this, uh, been here for seven years. Uh, I've had multiple times on the stage, one to close a school. I've done budget hearings with maybe six to eight people in here. So to have a crowd like this is really exciting and to share the stage with the graduates is, means a lot to me, so thank you. Uh, also note that there are five pages of a 
awards and scholarships for these students. So the, the amount of people that recognize you and your achievements is really amazing. So I, uh, I thank those stakeholders outside. Um, please hold your applause until all students receiving the scholarship or award have been announced. Students, please stand when your name is called. The A.L. Kellogg Memorial Scholarship presented to students who lived in the former Treadwell School District. Seniors graduating will receive $500. An additional $250 shall be available if the senior is planning to further their <clears throat> excuse me, education by attending an institution of higher learning or enlisting in the military service. This year's recipients are Logan Hitchcock, Gregory Ingram, Abigail Kivit, Skylar Knox, Ashley Komazinski, and Jeremy Van de Bogart. The A.L. Kellogg Memorial Award presented to two seniors with the highest GPA who lived in the former Treadwell School District. It's an award of $250 to the senior who is planning to further their education by attending an institution of higher learning or enlisting into the military service. This year's recipients are Abigail Kivit and Gregory Ingram. The Alva Moore Goldsmith Award. Two $500 awards given in memory of Alva Moore Goldsmith to each student, one male and one female, who has shown the most academic improvement during their high school years. This year's recipients are Skylar Knox and Donovan Allen. The Amanda Kristen Award, an award giving loving memory of Amanda Kristen to graduating seniors who plan on attending college in the fall. This year's recipients are Jared Cheshire, Garrett Decker, Isabel Ewing, Michaela Hunter, Daniel Maney, Carter Small, Joelle Smith, Jacob Sulis, and Cadence Waken. The ARC of Delaware County, an award of $50 to a graduate who has served in a school or community organization and is attending an institute of higher learning for study in the area of human services. This year's recipient is Ashley Komazinski. <laughs> the Army ROTC Scholarship, four-year scholarship providing full tuition to the University of Miami with a value of, yeah, hold on, $254,586. Recipient this year is Abby Leahy. <laughs> the Bert Santora Memorial Award, an award of $500 to a student intending to pursue advanced studies in the performing arts or a degree in literature. This year's recipient is Lucia Marseglio. Bob and Ellie Klukert Memorial Awards to eight seniors who will be furthering their education or serving their country or local community. This year's recipients are Donovan Allen, Jared Cheshire, Garrett Fitch, Dakota Hoyt, Reed Knapp, Elise Rapankis, Cody Sage, and Carter Small. The Cassie Davino Memorial Award Awards of $250 given in loving memory of 2006 graduate Cassie Davino to two seniors who through commitment and genuine enthusiasm has contributed the most to the Delaware Academy Senior High Music Program. This year's recipients are Annalise Taylor and Thomas Warden. The Charles Everett Kiff Scholarship Fund Awards a $1,000 per year for four years to four students attending an institution of higher learning. This year's recipients are Camille Muller, Abigail Kivit, Lauren Packard, and Elizabeth Lamport. <clears throat> the Classy Scholarship. The recipient wrote an essay 
about a school or group or nonprofit community organization that they felt was important to the school or local community and why it was important to them that Classy supported the organization. This year, Classy Scholarship was awarded to one of our very own, Shana Mondor. The Colin E. Haight Foundation is pleased to present $1,500 award to a deserving and humble graduate in recognition of her academic achievements. This year's recipient is Annalise Taylor. <laughs> the Delaware Academy Class of 1974 award in memory of lost classmates. An award of $300 each to three seniors who have excelled in healthcare, agriculture, or technology related field. Congratulations to Lauren Packard, Brianna Lowe, and Donovan Allen. <laughs> the Delaware Academy CSEA Award to five seniors who will be attending an institution of higher learning Jared Cheshire, Michaela Hunter, Gregory Ingram, Kenny Rasmussen, and Georgiana Verspor. <laughs> the Delaware Academy Faculty Association Scholarships are awards, award scholarships to seniors who plan to pursue further education. This year's award winners are Abigail Kivit and Annalise Taylor. The Delaware County Bar Association prize of $500 is presented to a graduating senior residing in Delaware County who plans to attend an institution of higher learning in the fall, who demonstrates an understanding of principles underlying the Constitution of the United States, and exhibits a fundamental respect for the rights of others in everyday life. This year's award winner is Caden Wagner. The Delaware County Electrical Cooperative Scholarship, DCEC, to two individual seniors who demonstrate high academic achievement and are pursuing a future career in engineering, science, business administration, or a related technical field. Congratulations to Abby Leahy and Sienna Dorr. The Delaware National Bank of Delhi Corporate Charitable Trust Award of $500 for a senior who will continue his or her education in any manner, including trade or vocational education, and training, and who has demonstrated community service and involvement. This year's award winner is Garrett Decker. The Delhi Educational Support Staff Association scholarships are awarded to graduating seniors of support staff members that are furthering their education or entering the U.S. military. The award winners are Amanda Nealis, Georgiana Verspor, Michaela Hunter, and Joelle Smith. The Delhi Educational Support Staff Association Adam J. Kelly Memorial Scholarship in memory of 2005 graduate Adam J. Kelly. It's awarded to a graduating senior continuing their service and dedication to their community in the first responder services, fire, EMS, and or dispatch. This year's award winner is Garrett Decker. The Delhi Firefighters Foundation Incorporated, a $500 per year for up to four years with proof of college enrollment. The student must be related to an active member of the Delhi Fire Department. This year that goes to Cody Sage. <laughs> the Delhi Odd Fellows Lodge Number 625 Scholarship Award. $100 to a deserving student who will be attending an institution of higher learning. This year's winner is Ashley Komazinski. The Dennis G. Mulholland Scholarship, in memory of Dennis G. Mulholland, who graduated from Delaware Academy in 1978. In his time at DA, 
He pursued coursework, sports, extracurricular, extracurricular activities. With the same high energy and positive outlook he brought to everything in his life. Throughout his college education and professional career in engineering, Dennis proved his ingenuity and expertise by developing numerous patents in many areas of the field, including fiber optics. The Mulholland family awards this scholarship in the hopes that others will continue to achieve in the indomitable spirit of their beloved brother. This year's recipient is Garrett Fitch. The Donald F. Starr Senior Awards of $50 to two students who have shown determination and a high commitment to their educational goals. This year's recipients are Issa Shaw and Cecilia Finn. The Donald W. Gleason Post 190 of the American Legion offers scholarships for two seniors in good academic standing. This year's recipients are Abby Leahy and Camille Muller. The Donald W. Jones Memorial Scholarship, awarded to a senior attending an institution of higher learning and who approaches life with a Jonesy spirit. This year's award winner is Lise Rapankis. The Dr. George P. Schlafer Award of $100 to a senior attending an institution of higher learning and majoring in either science or pre-med. This year's award goes to Abigail Kibit. The Dr. Herman S. Paris Scholarship Award in memory of Dr. Herman S. Paris, a dedicated and altru altruistic physician who served the Delhi community for 33 years. In recognition of his commitment and service to Delhi, the family of the late Dr. Paris would like to award three scholarships of $3,000 each to three exceptional graduating seniors of Delaware Academy. The recipients must exhibit the traits embodied by Dr. Paris, academic excellence, selfless morals, service to the community, respect among peers, and strong work ethic. This year's recipients are Amanda Nealis, Anna Tessier, and Tommy Warden. The Dr. Jaina Mahadeva Memorial Award, an award of $250 to two seniors, one male, one female, being a student athlete with the highest GPA and displayed a leadership role in DA varsity sports. This year's recipients are Anna Tessier and Marco Shaw. The Delhi Telephone Company Scholarship, a $1,000 scholarship awarded to a senior who best detailed how DTC's technology helped them during the COVID-19 pandemic. This year's winner, Elizabeth Lamport. <laughs> Dubbin Brothers Incorporated and Dubbin Gas Service, an award of $300 presented to a student who has demonstrated exemplary achievement in the field of occupational education. This year's recipient is Isabel Ewing. The E. Ogden Bush Scholarship of $150 to a senior achieving academic excellence who will be attending SUNY College of Technology at Delhi. This year's award, it goes to Cadence Waken. The Ellerman Federke Descendants Foundation Scholarship is awarded to students who have demonstrated scholastic achievement and participated in extracurricular and community activities. These students also demonstrated to the scholarship committee good character, maturity reflecting lifetime skills such as teamwork, responsibility, enthusiasm, independence, respect, honesty, integrity, and industriousness. This year there are two students receiving the scholarship. They are Sylvia Little and Camille Muller. The Ethan John Harold Sackett Scholarship, an award to a student in good academic standing, a member of at least one extracurricular club and sports team who has, accepted, who has been accepted into an institute of higher learning or vocational training. This year's award winner is Ashley Komazinski.
The Hall and Pete MacArthur Funeral Home Award is $250 to two seniors who have shown a commitment to community service and academics and will be continuing their education at an institution of higher learning. This year's award winners are Danny Maney and Shana Mondor. The Helen and John Bramley Educational Scholarship, $1,000 will be given to two seniors who plan on majoring in English and to a student majoring in engineering. This year's recipients are Sylvia Little and Donovan Allen. The Helen and Raymond Roach Awards of $750 each annually, renewable for up to four years, to two seniors attending institutions of higher learning. Must have community involvement, best effort academically, a C average. This year's award winners are Jacob Sulis and Joelle Smith. <laughs> the Henry W. Cannon Scholars. The trustees of the Henry W. Cannon Library wish to designate two members of the Delaware Academy Class of 2022 as Henry W. Cannon Scholars in recognition of their academic excellence and achievement, outstanding character and dedication to the school and community. These $3,000 awards are presented in honor of the memory of Henry W. Cannon and his contributions to our community. Congratulations to Camille Muller and Sylvia Little. The Herbert Parsons Award of $100 is presented to a graduate who has demonstrated exemplary achievement in the Senior High School Industrial Arts or Technology program. This year's award winner is Carter Small. The Hugh Lee Memorial Scholarship is a one-time award of $1,000 to a Bovina graduate. This year's award winner is Elizabeth Libby Lamport. The James Davis Award of $25 to a senior, her, senior who participated in golf and who will be attending college in the fall. This year's award winner is Libby Lamport. <laughs> the Jackie Adams Williams Memorial Fund Award, $50 to a graduate entering the U.S. military. This year's award winner is Abby Leahy. The James R. Tucker Senior Memorial Award, an award of $300 to a deserving senior who has attended BOCES and demonstrated the most academic improvement throughout their high school career, who plans on attending an institution of higher learning. Congratulations to Daniel Maney. The Jean Marie Collin Memorial Scholarship is an annual $1,000 award for up to four consecutive years of college or professional training. The scholarship goes to a Bovina graduate who demonstrates character and community appreciation through his or her activities and academic achievements. The award is in memory of Jean who perished in the 9-11 World Trade Center attack. This year's recipient is Sylvia Little. Promise we're in the home stretch. I do want to note too, I got the hard ones. Mrs. Mabel had the easy ones. So. The Jesse S. Burkett Scholarship Award. $1,000 awards granted to four senior students who plan on continuing their education. Recipients this year are Sylvia Little, Abby Leahy, Garrett Fitch, and Sienna Dorr. The John Chambers Newkirk Memorial Scholarship, $500 for the graduating student that has demonstrated good citizenship in high school by volunteering as a member of an, to, as a mentor to another student. This year's recipient is Amanda Nealis. <laughs> the John W. Lefevre Memorial Award, an award of $150 to a student who will be attending an institution of higher learning and majoring in the technology area. This year's winner is Julian Olson.
the Michelle McNaught Memorial Award, an award of $1,000 given in loving memory of 2008 graduate Michelle McNaught to a senior who will be furthering their education. This year's recipient is Thomas Warden. The New York State Comptroller Achievement Award, an award to a graduate who has demonstrated leadership potential and a commitment to public service. This year's recipients are Sylvia Little, Ashley Komazinski, Abby Kivit, Issa Shaw, and Abby Leahy. <laughs> the Peg Pandic Memorial Scholarship of $200 presented to a student who will be attending college with a major in political science or music. This year's recipient is Joelle Smith. <laughs> the Rachel Branciforte Memorial Award, an award of $250 presented to a student in memory of a two, of 2003 graduate, Rachel Branciforte. This year's recipient is David Reese. <laughs> the Richard E. Shaw Memorial Award, a scholarship of $125 to two seniors attending a business college is awarded to, in honor of Mr. Shaw for his, his life for his country in Vietnam and in memory and honor of him. The recipients this year are Jared Cheshire and Cadence Waken. <laughs> the Robert A. Pete Award, $500 to a graduate who will be pursuing a professional career in funeral service or otherwise service to humanity in the medical or health related fields and will be continuing their education in an institution of higher learning. This year's recipient is Brianna Lowe. <laughs> the Robert A. Pete Award, $500 to a graduate who has been exemplified as demonstrated by their personal conduct, compassion for others and service to community and who will be continuing their education at an institution of higher learning. This year's winner is Elise Rapankis. The Robert Knight and Melissa Knight Glickenhaus Award, an award of $500 to a senior student who attends and pursue a career in music and or music education. This year's recipient, Elise Rapankis. The Rotary Club of Delhi Community Service Award, an award of $500 to two seniors, one male, one female, who have demonstrated community care and participation in community activities and who plans to further his or her education. This year's recipients are Abby Leahy and Garrett Fitch. <laughs> Sylvia D. Newkirk Memorial Scholarship. $500 for the graduating student that plans to continue their education in the area of music or the cultural arts. This year's recipient is Shana Mondor. <laughs> this is maybe why I got this last one. Yeah. The William R. Oliver Memorial Award. This $100 award is given in loving memory of Bill Oliver to a student demonstrating a love of nature and respect for community. This year's recipient is Tommy Warden. At this time, we would like to invite the senior band ensemble to perform.
morning, family, friends, teachers, administrators, and most importantly, the class of 2022. Before I begin, I would like to thank everyone who made this day possible. Never in a million years would I have thought that I would be so grateful for packing 500 people in an auditorium, but here we are. I would especially like to thank my parents for supporting me throughout the last 18 years, and mostly for at least pretending to care about whatever experiment I did in chemistry each day. Thank you for supporting my nerdy infatuation with my parents. Contrary to the way I've operated for my entire high school career, in which I've studied and planned for every event, I did not start the speech until three days before it was due. My procrastination was the result of not knowing what to write about. Who am I to give advice when I've hardly experienced the world? So, being the scientist that I am, I decided to conduct one last experiment. My hypothesis. If I can find the sage advice hidden within those around me, then it will help us prevail, propel us through the next chapter of our lives. My procedure. I asked various people in the, my life the question, what advice do you have for high school graduates? I questioned coaches and teachers, recent graduates and retirees, plumbers, truck drivers and nurses, professors, social service workers, and police officers. And the results came pouring in. It appears that adults are more than willing to share their thoughts on life and happiness. The data, of course, divided into color-coded categories. First came the responses about careers. Things like follow your bliss and do what sparks you. In other words, find what you love to do and do it. And better yet, find somebody who will pay you to do it. There were responses about taking chances, about finding the courage to take risks, about stepping out of your comfort zone, or as Mooch put it, you can fail at something that you don't like, so you might as well take a chance on doing something that you love. We are all capable of more than we think. There were responses about seeking adventure, going on that trip, taking that class, studying abroad, exploring the unknown, not waiting for the someday. These next few years will be about discovery. You'll figure out how to pay for it somehow. There were responses about seeking adventure. Uh, sorry. There were responses about standing up for what you believe in, whether that be by carrying laundry baskets through the hallways or out cheering the Moravia moms. Shout out to the dog pound. There were responses about working with people, believing that everyone has something to bring to the table, even when it's controversial Facebook posts. Always assume that the person that you're listening to might know something that you don't. And remember, the impact that you have on those around you is much greater than you may imagine. Try to make it a positive impact. There are responses about marriage, specifically marrying rich. Or if you can't marry rich, just don't marry crazy. Crazy is forever, marriage is hard, divorce is expensive, and homicide is really tricky. <laughs> These are the wise words from my childhood librarian who made us refer to her as Miss Marjorie Darling. There are responses about finding the good, finding the positive side wherever you can. Being angry burns too much energy. Happiness is worth fighting for. Time flies, and although you won't believe it now, your future self will thank you for savoring the little moments. There are responses about meeting new people, about putting yourself out there and taking the chance to meet somebody different. There's no room for being shy. People are the flowers of life. We are nothing and nobody without each other. And who knows, you might just meet a really cool person like that Bosnian guy in Ocean City. There are responses about being good to yourself, giving yourself grace. You're the person who you're going to be with the longest. Walk with your head up and embrace your successes. But when all is said and done, stay humble. There are responses about perseverance, about fin finishing what you start, even if it seems fruitless or inane. Then came the practical responses. Things like learn how to fix your clogged drain, invest in your 401k, and buy Bitcoin. And it looks like I've got some work to do. And the best advice of all, get a cat. My analysis. When I finished collecting data, I realized that results were inconclusive. My hypothesis was unproven. There is no sage advice, no set path, no right way. The world will tell you who to be. People will give you advice, but only you can make those choices from here on out. My conclusion. If there is no one great piece of advice, instead, we must be able to embrace change. It's the only thing in life that is inevitable yet we constantly try to avoid it.
The next few years will be a huge transition no matter what your plans are. Enjoy them when they're good because they're going away eventually, but endure them when they're bad because something good is coming. Go into each experience with an open mind and open heart. What seems scary is often the most rewarding. And when you have doubts, sleep on it. The obstacle is not in the way, it is the way. We've all accomplished great things over the past four years. I mean, look at this group. We've won league, sectional, and state championships, sang at Yankee Stadium, put on a play during a pandemic, worked full-time jobs, started businesses, and so much more. We survived the biggest change of all, completing half of our high school career while history was actively being written. So I encourage you, don't let this be the end of your triumph, and instead, let today be the start of your way. Thank you. I'd now like to invite our board president, Mrs. Newman, and superintendent, Mrs. Zimmerman, to present candidates with their diplomas, as announced by Ms. Trask. I hope they're not getting lost. <laughs> Sylvia Lee Little. <laughs> Thomas James Warden. Camille A. Muller. <laughs> Donovan Martin Allen. Brandon Austin Armstrong. <laughs> Trevor Michael Bowie. Jared Carson Cheshire, receiving his diploma from his mother, Carrie Cheshire, Delaware Academy bus driver. Garrett R. Decker, receiving his diploma from his mother, Jessica Decker, Delaware Academy Elementary School Nurse.
Sienna Lee Prime Door. Isabel Rose Ewing. <laughs> Cecilia Alexa Finn. Garrett Arnold Fitch. <laughs> Michaela Lynn Hilo. Logan Monty Hitchcock. <laughs> Dakota Glenn Hoyt. Michaela Dana Hunter, receiving her diploma from her mother, Angela Hunter, Delaware Academy classroom aide. Gregory Ingram. Abigail Christine Kivet, receiving her diploma from her mother, Elizabeth Kivet, Delaware Academy Elementary School teacher. Reed William Knapp. <laughs> Skylar Knox. Maya James Kolig. <laughs> Ashley Elizabeth Komosinski.
Elizabeth Burns Lamport. Ambrielle Grace Leahy. Brianna Rochelle Lau. Kendra Harper Lau. <laughs> Shelby Elizabeth Lau. Daniel J. Maney. <laughs> Lucia Catherine Marsiglio. Rowan K. McCarthy. <laughs> Shana Marie Mondor. Amanda Lynn Nealis, receiving her diploma from her mother, Corey Nealis, Delaware Academy Middle School, Classroom 8. Julian J. Olson. <laughs> Lauren Mackenzie Packard. Elise Caden Rapunkis.
Kenny Rasmussen. David Elijah Reese. Skyler Jonathan Riggs. <laughs> Cody Sage. Marco Gaston Shaw. <laughs> Issa Shaw, receiving her diploma from her mother, Lauren Raba, Delaware Academy Board of Education member. Carter Gavin Small. <laughs> Joelle Marie Smith, receiving her diploma from her mother, Nancy Smith, Delaware Middle School aide. Jacob Matthew Sulis. <laughs> Trevor Robert Swart. Annalise Joy Taylor. <laughs> Anna Mae Tessier. Jeremy Allen Van de Bogart. <laughs> Georgiana F. Versfor, receiving her diploma from her father, Greg Versfor, Delaware Academy Director of Transportation.
Caden Wagner. Cadence Elizabeth Walken. Lonnie Tabitha Weiss. I now invite Mrs. Zimmerman to the podium to say a few words. Wow, what a year it's been. Um, not unlike Sylvia, you know, when I, when I tried to put pen to paper, I struggled a bit. But as I usually do, I turn to music for my inspiration. But this time, I have a pretty eclectic taste in music. So, you know, what would it be? Uh, some classic rock. Uh, I always, you know, go for a little Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Some uh, 80s metal, maybe some Guns N' Roses. Uh, maybe a little Prince. But, uh, no, this time I turn to uh, the musical Rent, and there's a song called Seasons of Love. And when I, uh, I hadn't heard that in a while, but when I did, I thought, oh, that'll be perfect to start us off. I just want to play just the first verse for you, and you'll see what I mean. Hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred minutes. How do you measure a year in laughter and strife? How do you measure a year in a life? Well, you might not realize this now, but your last four years of high school have been historically significant. At some point, someone will say to you, "Do you remember what you were doing? What you were doing during this point in a pandemic?" and floods of memories will rush back to you. Every experience has an impact. We learn through experience, we connect through emotion, but we remember when we have an emotional experience. Well, I'm here to tell you that I've had my share of emotional experiences with this class. This was the class that I interviewed as juniors when we were entering hybrid learning, and they told me everything that was wrong with what we were doing. This was the class that, again, as seniors, as we were coming out of the pandemic and trying to establish a new normal, again reminded me everything that was wrong with that. They insisted we know the way to our new normal. This was the class that tried to convince me that masks were unconstitutional. This was the class that saw our first student board of education member. This was the class that reinforced for me that a truck is truly a man's best friend. Isn't that right, Jeremy? <laughs> this is the class that taught me the strength of the dog pound and what I look like as a fathead. This class quite literally changed our code of conduct and taught me that lockers really didn't matter as much as I thought they did. 
This is the class that took us from Footloose to Once Upon a Mattress. This is the class that taught me how important the voice of the modern student was. And also the class that taught me how I should lead with modest confidence. See, this is a class that will never be afraid to be in the lead, to take risks and to make meaningful change. While each of your experiences have been very different, what this class has in common is resilience, perseverance, and hope. They've never hesitated to challenge the status quo, and that will take you far as you leave the halls of Delaware Academy. So I hope that you each are able to remember the challenges that you were able to overcome during your time here, the flexibility that you were inevitably able to demonstrate, and the focus that you continuously showed in moving forward toward a goal. You've shown me exactly how to measure a year in a life. I have a quote written on the board, on the whiteboard in my office that says, if your why is strong enough, you will figure out how. Well, this class has proven their why time and again. Now it's time to go out into the world and show us how. Congratulations, and always remember, you have a home at Delaware Academy. I would now be honored to invite our senior choir ensemble to perform one last song for us as seniors. They say every man should be protected. They say every man must fall. And yet I swear I see my reflection someplace so high above these walls. I see my life.
President of the Board of Education, Mrs. Newman, and parents, I certify that these students have met all the qualifications and requirements set forth by the Ed State Education Department of New York State, the Board of Regents, and the Commissioner of Education of the State of New York. Will the valedictorian please stand and step forward for the ceremonial moving of the tassel? Will the graduates please stand? Valedictorian, will you lead your peers in moving the tassel? Proud to present to you the Delaware Academy Central School District at Delhi, Class of 2022. Let them fly. Take us a moment to let us get our caps back.
Thank you. Graduates, families, and friends, we invite you to join us for a brief reception on the patio at the end of the ceremony. Congratulations to the class of 2022.